whichever programming language you decide to program in, they can generally be categorized into two distinct categories, or at least somewhere along that line. High-level languages or low-level languages. High-level languages, like this one, are ones such as Python, Java, uh, Visual Basic, the ones that you would program in on a day-to-day -day basis. The idea of a high-level programming language is that it's as close to English as possible. It uses some English words, some understandable sort of mathematical structure, and each line will perform usually several different tasks if you go down to a CPU or RAM level. For example, this Python code here, it takes input from the user and it assigns it to the variable A. That doesn't seem that complicated, but actually if we break this down, then we've got quite a few things going on there. Firstly, the computer has to assign a variable called A to somewhere in the memory. So there is some memory space that is referenced by the letter A when we type it in to uh, the program. We also take an input from the user and we store that somewhere in the memory. Okay, These two things are obviously linked, but they are gen they're really just two separate tasks. Also, we round down that number and store it as an integer. Okay, So if I was to enter 4.2, it would enter it as 4. So we've got quite a few different things going on on that single line. The same thing's happening on this single line, and then print means to output it. Okay, It also adds it together as well as outputting it. So in only three lines, we've got quite a few things going on. But because we've kept it as structured as possible, and because this programming language has been designed in a way that it is relatively understandable to the average person, even without much programming skill, we've managed to do quite a few things in a single line or in, in three lines. The other possibility is that we could program this in a low-level programming language. Like, for example, here. Here we've got the same thing happening. We take an input, we store it, we take another input, we store it, we load the first input, we add the second one, and we output it. The difference you can see, firstly, is that it's quite a few more lines. Last time we only had three lines. Now we've got seven. So what we could do in three lines before, we're now doing in seven lines. You can also see that it's each of the instructions are a lot shorter. The reason is that it's not kept as close to English as possible. These still do refer to English words. For example, this one here says input, this one here is store, this one here is load, this one is add, and obviously this one is output. However, we've shortened them down a little bit. Another thing you might notice is that we've got this number and these numbers here. These are the locations in memory. Here we're saying we want to input a number and we want to store it in memory location 42. We want to input a second number, store it in memory code location 43, load what we add in 42, add 43, and then output. In the previous example, and in pretty much any high-level language, we don't reference the memory locations. The computer does all that for us. When the program is interpreted or compiled down to machine code, it assigns each variable or each piece of information piece of data to a memory location, but it doesn't bother us with that. It doesn't bother the user or the programming with that because it just decides on its own where is that where that is going to go. A benefit of using a low-level language, therefore, is that you can, if you wanted to, access specific parts of the hardware, which you can't do with a high-level language. However, a low-level language takes quite a bit more time to program something that is very similar. Okay, so if you were programming two things that were exactly the same time, uh, sorry, the same uh, length, it would, in the length in terms of uh, what the program is doing, it would probably take a lot longer in low level language because the program would be more instructions. As you can see, the way that it's structured is that we've got each individual line does one thing. This only inputs, whereas on this one, it inputs it, it rounds it down, and it assigns it to A. Okay, this here, loads 42, adds 43, and outputs it in three lines. Here we've managed to condon condense that down into two lines simply by saying print A and B. So, although this one is 
a lot easier to understand to the average person who would be able to read and generally understand what these words are this one is a lot more broken down and we can actually see what's happening with each part of it let's take a look at this example this example here is just showing how we use branching what I mean is the equivalent of an if statement we can see that things are starting to get very very complex here with an if statement in low-level language generally we're not comparing two things and doing something based on some sort of condition that we're making up in some examples of this assembly code okay we can only branch to a different area of the code if a variable is zero so what we have to do is we have to very carefully control our different variables and if we want to do an if statement that if statement can only pass the condition if something is zero or if something is not zero so what happens here is we input a number we store it in 12 we input a number store it in 13 we load uh, 5 we branch if zero to end end is down here so if whatever is in address number five is zero we're going to branch down here otherwise we're going to do this one okay and we subtract one from the number store it in five so basically this is an extremely simple for loop that just adds two things sorry an if statement which just adds two things together okay until something has reached zero yeah the equivalent of doing this in high level programming language would be a while loop okay we'd say while something is not zero do this but we would be able to condense it down into a lot shorter code as we can see here this is an example using python of an if statement it's a lot more simple than the thing we've got going on here okay and while this is more like a for loop they're still relatively comparable because they do generally the same thing they branch to a different area if something isn't true so if a isn't bigger than B we go down here okay however if it is bigger than B we do this thing so the point that I'm trying to get across is simply that this thing here is extremely simple to program in a high level language but is more difficult to program in a low level language because you're using sort of very very limited amount of instructions to control the flow of information so to reiterate, generally, high-level languages are closer to English. They are a lot easier for the programmer to spot errors in, and also they are generally a lot shorter. Low-level languages use each line generally has one instruction that does one thing at a very sort of basic CPU or RAM level. It is also quicker for the computer to carry out the things here because each line as we said is one instruction it will take longer for the computer to carry this out because the machine code which would represent this has is a lot more abstract than the machine code that would represent this here we are a lot closer to what the computer would eventually understand in terms of the ones and zeros here we are quite far away from it so there is more work for the computer to do to figure out and assign variables and assign different uh, data to different parts of the RAM and assign the CPU to different tasks etc than there is in this one okay so to keep it simple not very much like English a lot like English each line generally does one thing each line does lots and lots of different things the computer can run it quicker, it takes a little bit longer for the computer to run.